What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number 8 of Park to Prem here with Nottingham Forest. Today guys we've got a live com double header. Yes, we're home for a treat. First and foremost we've got a game which is going to be first versus second as we take on Huddersfield who sit top and pretty of the league. Falling on from that as you can see here, a game against Arsenal away from home, a proper test. Of course, last time we left things, the transfer window was still open. It has slammed shut. Did we sign anyone? No, no, we didn't. I was pretty content with the team, to be fair, going into the start of the season. That said, there were a few departures still. Um, two fairly significant fees of kind of money received as well. The first for Ethan Galbraith. £10 million for him from Middlesbrough? I don't know what they're thinking. We signed him on a freebie. I say we. Chris Hewton signed him on a freebie last season. Uh, as you can see, he played 16 games as a player who just fell out of the pecking order once I took over. Didn't even do very well in the matches that he played in. Uh, somehow, we've managed to muster up £10 million for him, which I will very happily take. Thank you very much, Middlesbrough. Also, Musa Kamara has gone to Burnley. This is the perfect example of a player who probably has a lot of potential I just have no confidence in their ability to actually achieve it. An ambitious personality, inconsistent, they look pretty meh across the board, £9.5 million received. Uh, yes please, I will happily take that to the bank and back. Thank you Burnley. And well that's not the only time that we have Burnley to thank today, because if we look at the schedule since you were last here, you'll notice that we played them in the EFL Cup. We'll come to that shortly. Anyway, quite a lot of games played to start the season. We kicked things off with the Bristol Rovers game last episode, which we won. Following on from that, another really emphatic win. This time against Millwall, 4-0 at the city ground. Uh, a real mixed bag of goals in this one, it'd be fair to say. Riyad Talbi opened up his books for the club, the new striker we signed from Lyon, looking very good with a composed finish then. Thiago Arojo then came in and, well, worked some magic in from the left-hand side. Um, we actually had Roger get injured in this game. So as a result, Palembi, the young French centre mid, who can happily play right mid, he went out wide. He was massively involved in that second goal for us. Brewster then scored from the penalty spot, and then not long after that, one of the weirdest own goals you're going to see all year. It will be on the blooper reel. They'll sell it on, you know, the football bloopers DVD set you used to get about a decade ago. Yeah, a weird one. 4-0 though, clean sheet, big win. Very, very happy with that. Unfortunately, we did then go on to lose to Brentford 1-0. Uh, to Manny Grimes, sent off after 39 minutes. Certainly didn't help our case of getting back into the game, having gone down early. But that is the only defeat we've had to start the season so far. We beat Port Vale, who play a few divisions down from us in the EFL Cup first round. Brewster with a hat-trick. He's been getting some really nice finishes, actually, in this run of game. And, uh, well, against the likes of Cardiff, Birmingham and Reading, we won very convincingly. Uh, three games in the space of a week in the Championship. Not necessarily the biggest margins of victories, but we look good. Samake getting in on the goal-scoring action a couple of times. Mighton involved as well, although he is currently out injured. Keanu Hoover as well getting the only goal in the, the win against Birmingham, a Birmingham team who have started the season well. Anyway, against Burnley, a Premier League team, we took them on in the EFL Cup second round. We beat them 2-0. Matt Smith with his first ever goal for the club. He is the Welsh right mid who can also play centre mid, who we signed from Austria Vienna. Uh, he looked really good in this game. And then Rian Brewster with a fantastic finish towards the end of the game. Burnley looked to maybe get back into it. That goal there really ended any hope they had. And most recently... Stoke, our old friend, the team who I don't really like to talk about, we drew 0-0. Um, yeah, there's nothing to say, so let's not talk about it. <laughs> So in terms of what that start of the season means for us, we currently sit in second ahead of Huddersfield, which is a bit of a surprise. Uh, last episode I talked about Bournemouth and Norwich City being our two big rivals. You might notice Nor Norwich aren't here. They are down in 16th. In fact, they sacked their manager after six games and David Marshall has now taken over in charge. They are taking on Lincoln today. David Marshall was the man who succeeded us. At Lincoln City. Yeah, it's all there's a big loop of things going on here. So Lincoln are now looking for a new manager. Norwich have the previous Lincoln manager. That in itself could be a little match to keep an eye on for. Um, I do wonder if Norwich might be able to mount some kind of comeback like, of course, we and Swansea did last year. But anyway, let's get into today's game. We're taking on Huddersfield. In terms of team news for today's game, unfortunately, we are suffering with a fair few injuries. Nothing super long term, but just throughout this entire start of the season, I've not had a settled 11. And it's been fairly consistently the midfielders in the wide areas with the injuries. 
You can see here, Seagross is currently out, not ready for a fitness test. Adrian Smith, I think, has been told he can play 45 minutes. As a result, Thiago Arojo is going to come in. This is the exact situation we brought him in for. So far, he's actually had four starts. 7.2 rating. He's done really well, actually, out on the left-hand side. Regina does have an injury, but apparently... You know, it remains some way short of full fitness, but a fitness test is not required. That's what we want to read. So as a result, he is going to start for us out on the right-hand side. Adrian Smith's on the bench. The rest of the team, I think, has changed ever so slightly since you were last here. I have brought Talby in to start. He's been performing really well in training, got a goal or two in the few starts we've given him. Meanwhile, and I don't want to, you know, disregard him too soon, Leighton Stewart, five starts, zero goals. Maybe he can be a super sub on off the bench in this first game for us today. But anyway, this is the team that we're going to go with. Damani Grimes not starting since he got sent off in the Brentford game. I've just gone off him. Peter Shack has just been doing really, really blooming well. Uh, really excited to see how he can do. He's playing for the Polish national team regularly, and he's also kind of made that centre-back position very much his own. Anyway, Roger may not be able to see out the game, but we will cross that bridge when we get there. Hopeful that we can get a good result in this game. It's top versus second. Huddersfield yet to lose a game this season, so they are going to be a tough little team. This should be a good test for us, but besides the Brentford game that we lost having had a sending off, I'm feeling pretty good about our chances here. I feel like we've had a good start to the season. You know, a few strikers like Leighton Stewart not perhaps stepped up like I would have hoped they might, but despite all of that, what I would say is that so far, we're looking very, very much in control of games that we play in. We look like a good team. We look like a team who will be in and amongst the pigeons in terms of automatic promotion spots this year. Which, I think this year, I, just, I don't want to be in the playoffs, do I? I think automatic promotion has to be the main aim. And a result in this kind of game here, a tricky game at home against Huddersfield, is the kind of guy, game that's going to help us out as well. There he is, Wilson Samake. Goal number seven for the season. Not quite matching last year's return in terms of goals per game, but he's good in the air and he's good at finding space and he's j done just that. Robertson whips the ball in. Samake, unmarked back post, gets his noggin on it, puts us ahead just after half an hour. The only highlight we've had of the game as well, but that's fine by me. Huddersfield yet to have a shot on target in this game. We are dominating possession. Passes completed are through the roof for us. 58% of possession. And, uh, well, I'll tell you what, it's a first half that hasn't seen a whole lot of highlights, but we have been in complete control of this game. And we are in the lead against a team who are yet to lose this year, which is well, as good as you can hope for, really. Roger really is struggling. I may bring in... I was, who am I going to bring in? I could move Palembi out wide and move Smith into the middle, maybe on off the bench. We'll have a look at it after this highlight, as Robertson looks to pick out Samake for the second time this game. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out, although... Uh, well, Peter Shack is there to head the ball away. Big ball lumped over. Stokes collects. I will say that Stokes in goal hasn't been mind-blowing yet this year, although he's not had too much to be tested with, in truth. Samake with the ball here. Options in the middle. Tries to go on his lonesome. Smashes it into the side netting. Roger is not hes not looking well, everyone. Right. Uh, we're going to move Palembi into the wide area, and then actually, uh, I'm going to keep things simple here. I'm going to bring in Longstaff. Palembi is a really good, you know, centre mid option. That's really what we brought him in for. But he does have this bonus of being able to play right mid. And he is very, very good defensively. Lacks a little bit in the crossing department and dribbling and off the ball. But more than solid defensively. Physically good. Technically very good in terms of being able to knock the ball around well in our system. It's not the job we brought him in for. But actually, with all the injuries and, you know, the rotation that's been needed here and there, he's not done a bad job. Talby's been a little poor in this game. So, you know what? Leighton Stewart, come on down. He's going to have the best part of 35 minutes to find his first goal of the season in the league. And uh, you know what? I think we're, we're due a little bit of a shouty-shouty as the set piece is whipped in. Oh, my word. It's headed off the line by Orojo. That is absolutely massive. Leighton Stewart commits a foul. Was a, was a tad unnecessary, but you know what? I'm not going to complain because it's not led to anything. It's a good job we've got an Arsenal game to look forward to after this one. This has not been a classic, although what I would say is against the team... Top of the league, we have dominated them. I would love a second goal just to make things more comfortable. But no, we've been really, really solid thus far in this game. Hopefully we can get this result over the line. Another set piece, similar area to the one we scored before. And I'll tell you what, it's a similar result. It's Hayden Roberts this time, the left centre-back. Not a player known for his aerial prowess. 
But in an almost direct copy of the previous goal, it's whipped in by Longstaff and off the bench. Roberts just nods it down. Really good header. And you know what? We absolutely deserve that. Whilst perhaps from open play, we've been a tiny bit quiet, a tiny bit disappointing. We've made the most of set pieces, which is one of the club's kind of ethoses. It's one of the visions we have to stick to. And we've beaten the team who are top 2-0. And with that, I do believe we go top of the league. Look at that. Uh, elsewhere, it looks like Bournemouth might have slipped up. Or have they just not played? No, have they played? Bournemouth? Yeah, they drew against Millwall. That's a great result for us. Elsewhere, Birmingham, I guess, won to go into third. Fulham and Derby also, you know, not too far behind. But there is a, a little bit of a cushion now emerging. And that goal difference, it, it does look very, very pretty, doesn't it? Hopefully... This is where we're now going to sit for the foreseeable future. Anyway, Roger played well, although his fitness was a bit of a concern there. I think for the next game we've got coming up against Luton, we're going to need to rotate things around. But of course, still another game to come today. That was only the appetizer, folks. I'm going to go and play the Luton game off camera. We'll be back for the Arsenal game away from home. EFL Cup third round. I'm feeling good. Let's see how we get on. So going into this Arsenal game, I'm not really sure what to expect. This is one of those games where it gives us a chance to test ourselves against Premier League opposition. Are they even going to play a full strength team in the Carabao Cup? You know, it kind of remains to be seen. But away from home, taking on Premier League opposition doesn't happen too many times a season when you're in the Championship. And it's a good chance for us to see how we fare, I suppose. Worth noting, we did just play Luton, obviously off camera, as you can see here. A 4-0 win, a very uh, dominant display. Not dissimilar, to be honest, to the one against Huddersfield. But on this occasion, just a little more clinical. Just creating a little bit more. Brewster got a hat-trick too. So, yeah, he's really enjoyed his time at the club so far. Considering that we signed him for 12 million pounds it's looking like a crazy good bit of business to be honest the goal scoring record last year was good looks like he's going to ma maintain it and then some going into this year and uh i don't know i i feel pretty confident and pretty calm right now this was a really good result you'll notice stewart didn't score he got a 7.0 every one though so maybe that's some progress anyway this is a midweek game so the team is only a little bit rested which is a little bit of a shame. In terms of the squad for today's game, there is rotation forced across the board, sadly, due to injuries, due to rotation. Smith's actually going to start out on the right-hand side for us. Of course, I mentioned him earlier as a player we've brought in and who had played in a few of the games since you were last here. He's got three assists in three starts in the league. He's looked very, very competent as a defensive winger. It's such a weird role to pick players for. It's not a role that I've ever used that much in Football Manager, but I've been enjoying kind of tinkering with it, trying to figure things out. And he seems like he might be, you know, a really good player at that role that he's still really picking up. One of the big issues, to be honest with the team so far this year, have been the centre mid position. Now, Robertson in the last couple of games has made my decision making a little bit easier. But to be honest, between the likes of Robertson, uh, Palembi, Longstaff, uh, obviously, Matt Smith, the right winger, can play at centre mid. Uh, Gary Healy as well, who led the way with assists last year. I don't think for all these names, there's really standout players who just land straight on you know the, 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 the team sheet, I suppose. So there's a bit of experimentation needed. I'm kind of picking the squad based off form right now. Um, the exception, I suppose, would be Palembi. But I just feel like the quality that Palembi has, the versatility to be able to play out at right mid, and just how well-rounded they are as a midfielder, I kind of just have to play them, right? I mean, if we just compare them with Longstaff, for example, who I will say now has actually been declining kind of just across the board since we came to the club. A player who I'm not necessarily against cashing in for, although he has been okay so far to start the year. But yeah, if we just compare the two here, you can see there really is daylight between the two players in terms of the quality. So despite the fact Ronan hasn't hit the ground running, he's going to start for us today. Also at left mid, you'll notice Arojo there, um, Smith. Of a Smith is still not in, uh, injury free, sadly for us. Has been quite a long time out with this injury. Apparently, a fitness test isn't required. I just feel like in the Carabao Cup, it's not the game to risk a player in who hasn't got match fitness. So, anyway, this is the team. There's not too much in the way of rotation. Let's see how we get on at the Emirates. I'm hoping that we're going to just be good. I mean, that, that that's what you hope for going into most games, but I'm hoping that we'll. Show what we're all about here. This is going to be a tough game. Even if they are playing a little bit of a rotated side Arsenal, it's going to be a very different challenge to the Burnley game we had in the previous round of the competition. Albeit that was another you know, Premier League team that we were able to take down on that occasion. Uh, looking at it, it's a full strength team. I can already tell they've got Richarlison up front, Vlasic, Martinelli, uh, Kessie. 
yeah, that's a, got a team with some fairly familiar names. So this is going to be an interesting test. Also, you know, if we are eyeing up promotion, this is one of the few opportunities we might have to test the 3-4-3 against a Premier League opposition in this kind of environment. Um, if it works, fantastic. If we struggle a little bit, then, uh, well, I'll, I'll panic a little, I suppose. Anyway, it's headed away from us now. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll try not to panic too hard. Of course, Arsenal are slightly above the calibre of most Premier League teams. You know, they are still a European regular. But I don't want to concede inside the first 15 minutes. No, the point I was going to make there is even if today, you know, we don't look that great, we, we have to remember the context of all of this. Either way, though, they had possession high up the pitch. You can see we've got plenty of men in the box. Everyone is marked up. Unfortunately for us, it's Roberts, actually. The hero of our last game, scoring that second goal. He just doesn't get shirt tight to Richarlison. He's able to win the ball in the air. And you know what? It might be preemptive, but I think it's time to get a little shouty-shouty. Anyway, Smith tries a long throw. He kind of just chucks it into the ground. Didn't know, look like he knew what he was doing, to be honest. But Hoover's got it here. Maybe we can make something building out from the back. Or maybe we're going to shoot ourselves in the foot. We've loaded up the rifle. Are we pulling the trigger? No, we've been we've been left the hook there. Hoover, though, questionable is perhaps an understatement. What was that by the right centre back there? Now we've got a set piece to defend. Vlasic whips it in, and uh, well, it's a familiar name on the score sheet. Everyone, Richarlison, two goals for him. I'm assuming it's the Richarlison, as in Everton Richarlison, rather than a Regen Richarlison. But yeah, the number ten, not for the first time in this game, getting a free header. Look pretty disappointing from set pieces and just from crosses in general. And just to confirm, yes, it is it is the Richarlison, everyone, who unsurprisingly would walk into our team in just about any position. Anyway, it's another set piece. Let's not concede another header, please. Oh my god. If, I mean, if that had gone in, I'm gonna be like, well, yeah, I know I asked for no header, but maybe no shot in general. I mean, so far in this game, we've had a lot of possession and I had a lot of the passing, but we're just not really getting it up the pitch at all. This could be an interesting game to look at in a little more detail, depending on how it plays out. Just not creating enough right now. Maybe you should go just a smidge more direct, but we've got a chance here, so let's not disregard ourselves. And it's a lovely goal. It's 2-1, everyone. Brewster threaded through from Samake. And for all the possession we've had, finally, it's actually meant something. Really, really nice goal, though. Leighton Stewart involved in the build-up play. Just the three musketeers, the three strikers up top. Linking up nicely. Samake, very unselfish. Brewster's run was superbly timed. And you know what? I am I am just going to tell the players just to be, be a little more direct. Play a little higher tempo. Hopefully, that isn't going to impact our ability to dominate uh, possession. And also, the pass is completed. We've looked good. I mean, 2-1 at half time. Yes, we've not created as much as I would like. But we're not being completely outclassed here. In the end, at the end of the day, right now, it's a corner. That's the difference between the two teams. And I fancy our chances on set pieces attackingly. Anyway, we'll see what the second half brings. We could make some subs. We could be called into some early defensive action here. Although cleared away nicely. Leighton. Oh, I thought it was going to be Leighton. Sure, no, it's Samake actually on the ball here. Bringing it forward down the far side. Options in the middle. Could he turn provider again? Tries to get it in. Falls to Robertson who does have a ball of quality in him. Palembi, unfortunately, couldn't get there. Now he could be called into a bit of defensive action. Richarlison bearing down on goal. Plenty of men back, though, you'd have to say. But, oh my word, I thought for a second he was going to score a nutty goal for the hat-trick. I think we've been let off the hook a little bit there. A bit of mercy shown, perhaps. Right, I'm going to change things up here. We've got a few bookings, but I'm looking at the wide midfielders. Adrian Smith, come on down. Uh, and you know what? Regina... Still coming back from injury, still not match fit on the bench for today as a result. But you know what? Fresh legs in the wide area could be what's needed in this game. Or maybe it's not, as the ball's whipped in. We head it away, though. Samake. Player streaming on left of him. Is he going to be able to pick out a pass? He flies into a tackle there. Let's try and press high at the pitch. Mendoza goes back to the keeper. Arsenal going to look to build from the back. Oh my, was it, who is, is that Leighton? Leighton, that was not a good tackle, mate. You're on a booking. You're on a bucket. Run. Just need to, need to ease off tackles, Leighton. Ease off them. Ease, easy now. Richarlison, still looking for his hatchet. Gives it to Martinelli. I was about to say, Stokes is going to need to make a huge save there. He didn't in the end. The shot goes wide of the mark. We are let off the hook once more. 
Certainly Arsenal having, you know, most of the chances in this game, although that's kind of to be expected. I feel like we've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with them so far, though. Leighton Stewart, do not give away a penalty. What? Uh, uh, nerv nervous noises coming from the work the space corner. I don't know what to say there. It's just not the sight I want to see. Right, set piece. Rian Brewster, he scores these. He scores these. He's not scored this one. It's gone over. 20 minutes left, though. There's still only one goal in it, everyone. Smith on off the bench, long throw, launches it forward. Where's Samake? It's coming down with snow on it. Ball's gone into orbit, everyone. Going to look to launch a counter-attack. Peter Shack wins it. Now with Palembi. Rogina, Roger. What can you do, Roger? Skips past one. Could he skip past another and get the ball in? He does. Back post, Stewart down to Smith. The shot's blocked. What an opportunity. It's still not cleared, though. We've looked good here. We've looked really good. We have had chances. We've had opportunities. But that, perhaps the best opportunity of the game so far for us outside of the goal itself. One last shout of demand more. 13 minutes left. Time to get back into this game is trickling away. Stewart forward to Samake, who's going to need to hold it up a little bit for men running on. Gabriel puts in a great tackle from behind for a second. I was hoping for a second yellow. That said... Chance is still brewing here. Smith on the wing. Options in the middle. Whips it in. Keeper collects superbly. Making a go of it, though. And that's all, that's all I can really ask for. Making a go of it. Regina can't quite get there. Dwight McNeil bringing the ball forward for them on the near side. Blocked once. Richarlison to Jared Bone, who hits it. Stokes makes one save. Makes another save. Smith gets it clear. Oh, my word. The double save by Stokes was huge. Right, Leighton Stewart has looked wobbly in this game. Now, I could bring in Talby. I, I could bring in Talby, and that's perhaps the most logical thing to do, but there is something in my head telling me that Aknamash is the man to bring in here. Give him his debut. Give him, I was going to say his debut. He's played three games for us, but give him another opportunity. He's left-footed. Cutting in on his stronger foot could be deadly. Going to bring him on, put him at right attacking mid. or well, not right attacking mid, but right forward. We've Brewster out onto the left. That's that's my thinking. That's the change I'm going to go with. We've got a set piece to deal with first, though. Already been a victim of one of those, but we get this one clear. Maybe Akamash can be a, can be a difference maker for us. That's the hope, isn't it? The former, I think it's Barcelona. It's, Bar it's Barcelona. It's not Real Madrid. He plays for Barcelona. I know this. Maybe he can have an impact, or maybe just nothing's going to happen. I mean, the time has just trickled away. What an anticlimactic end. But you know what? I'm pretty proud of that performance. I, I feel like we've shown what we're all about there. We went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. All their attacking talent. And you know what? We've gone out 2-1. Maybe we didn't ever really look like winning it. But to do that away from home against Arsenal is... I don't know. That, may, that fills me with optimism for this season and beyond. We had a few key players not starting today, like Regina, like Smith... I feel like we can be relatively proud of that. Of course, we're never really going to go on an EFL Cup run. We've got to be realistic here. We've hit the board expectations. I hope we haven't. They wanted us to get to the fourth round. It was the third round and knocked out to Arsenal. I think we'll be given the benefit of the doubt there. But you know what? What it does mean is we can now just focus on the league. Nine games into the season, three points ahead of Birmingham. Really, we want to be cementing our automatic promotion credentials this year. Now, in terms of when we're going to be back, we've got a few games on the horizon. Obviously, Norwich have started slowly. Lincoln City always lingers as kind of a tantalising prospect, but I think I'm going to put it off for now. I think next time we're probably going to come back for either the game against Bournemouth before the game against Derby. Um, we'll see how both those teams are shaping up. Of course, Derby v Nottingham Forest. It's a massive Derby. It's a big rivalry. Could be a very good game at the start of November, but I anticipate Bournemouth to go strong and maybe emerge as kind of one of the big contenders with ourselves for the automatic promotion spot. So, yeah, we'll see what happens on that front. Anyway, guys, I hope you have enjoyed the Livecom doubleheader today. If you have, make sure to drop a like on the video. Helps me out massively. If you have any observations, thoughts and opinions on the team, how we played in either of these fixtures, I'd love to know them down in the comments. And until next time, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.